welcome back to the self-made auto channel you kind of see where we're going to this point 05 toyota corolla needs a right front wheel bearing now, i know we have another video on our channel for an 07 very similar if not exactly the same but truth be told i need a video and you guys like your nuts and bolts stuff so we're going to keep going with it and hopefully we'll be able to do so without getting the camera soaking wet so we're down to the dreaded snap ring on the back side of this wheel bearing now viewers have sent me various types of snap ring pliers whatnot and what have you my weapon for this is the air hammer the snap ring in here is rusted and solid i'll tell you that so we're going to just go around very gingerly with the weak sauce air hammer we're going to be using the mac one so the lowest on the totem pole power wise and we're just going to massage this ring i like to say just massage the edge of it Try to get it loose. All right, I've got this set to its massage setting. Let's see if I can get in here anywhere. So you guys can't see. Neither can I. No big deal. I need some light. Oh, water right in my ear. you own big nasty and you put big nasty on this job it's a little too big not gonna lie we'll keep foaming her down with some of the WD now make sure that you're hitting just the snap ring and not not the edge of the spindle here Just like that, it liked its massage. We will redouche just because. Because it's fun. I'm gonna get up here with a pry driver, give it a little tap. Running that sucker right in a circle. Look at that. Now we'll use our pry driver. We got it out just a little bit, I'll get behind it. Now if I can, come up from this angle. There we go. Right that snap ring. Everything's in my way, including the camera. Let's see. Of course. Oh, you son of a mother. I guess every son is some kind of son of a mother, aren't they? Truth. Hashtag. Well, how about we just go get some snap ring players at this point? Before we get a million comments, no, these are not the snap ring players that are designed for this. Come on, little fella, there's one half. I can just hold them and tap the other side. Oh, look at that. Didn't even send it flying. So there's our snapper. So I'm gonna do it now because we need, we're gonna use the hub tamer, hub grappler to push this out, but I need this bearing race. And I bought a whole hub kit for this one because typically, or otherwise I should say, we would just salvage this race back off the hub. But what we're gonna do, I'm gonna see if I can knock out the inner one. Did you hear it? So we're just gonna take this, put this out here. Of course it has a little seal piece on it still, which uh, should come off relatively easy. Planking. A little tap there. 
I'm a liar, liar. I thought they would, uh, well, whatever, dude. We're just gonna stick it on. It'll push it through. It's just tin. I thought they popped right off. I could be wrong. So we just stick that race there. Now we've got something to press against. We don't have to worry about the balls coming out and then trying to cut the inner race out. So let's go get the hub tamer. I'll be using the old school 6537 hub tamer elite. Now I do not believe that OTC makes this anymore. So I still have the full kit. They now the newer version is the 6575. This is the hub grappler kit. This has a little different design for pulling the hub off. I choose to use a slide hammer. Now I have used this set, as you can see, it's basically the updated version of the hub tamer. So it works just as well. The hub remover, so the piece that we slide hammered off, this has a tool that takes that off, which I think we've shown it in other videos, that works better than the original design, which utilized this bracket here uh, to pull the hub. Like I say, I use the slide hammer because personally I just think it's quicker. And I suppose the main reason for this video, besides not only educating and semi-entertaining, I want to see if the Harbor Freight has enough lead in its pencil to push this bearing out. I'll get a receiver cup that's going to fit here. Feels like this couple work. We're just gonna give a little tap tap. Oh, that should be nice and stuck when I want to get it out. That's all right. Let's see. So I did do a provision to this. I add added my own bearing. So these little D5 bearings. I did a video on this also. I add a bearing. They don't last long. They have a tendency to explode. These are the ones I buy. These, these little guys here. I believe that's the part number. I think they're just D5. They're pretty inexpensive. Put it on there. And I don't know, I guess you can figure that portion of it out. There we go. Let's uh, give this a little shot of the WD. Not a sponsor. That's just what we're using today. We'll lube up our bearing so when it explodes. Oh man, there's a lot of lube going on here. So we'll stick this up here, like so, just using the forcing screw, or as some refer to it, the inclined plane. We're just gonna force it through. Let me go get some sockets. I did take a Honda crankshaft bolt off the other day with this little guy. However, I was using that, you know, Lyle socket, that big jabroni socket there that's made for it. You don't want your inner cup to get stuck. Clean the rust out first or just beat it back out. So I'm just giving it the classic reach through. Oh, just like a dentist using a pick with a little 45. And just scraping out the snapping groove, just getting all the crud out of it. That way when we press the new bearing in, it doesn't 
you know, pull any of that crud in with it. Plus, it makes it a whole lot easier to put the snap ring in. So just make sure you dig that out good. Oh, especially right there. All right. Once that is finished, of course, the brake clean, who can forget that? We'll hose it. Oh, I hear you getting low, little fella. Don't worry. I got 50 more of you. You just want to make sure there's no rust, especially up behind this flange, you know, there's no little crusties hiding. This will, this will flush them out. That's it, I'm going with no straw. Just going wild. Savage. There. There's that. napkin. Just want to make sure the bore is good and clean. Shiny. Now we will give it a little fog of the Debbie D. Debbie D. I don't know why. To be honest with you. I think it might help. Now we do have, I bought an SKF bearing from Napper. It is the entire kit. It does not look like the picture, FYI. I remember the one video I did on this, a couple of the viewers were like, oh, I don't know why you didn't buy the bolt-on assembly. You're such a moron. I don't know if that's what they talk like, but that's how I envision it. Don't watch this hack. He's doing it the old school way. I just envision that all YouTubers sound like that. It's probably not true. So there's the bearing. They are not directional. Now, if your vehicle has a press-in bearing and it has analog brakes, it may have the tone ring on one side of the bearing or the other. So pay attention to that. The magnetic side will face in or out, depending on where your wheel speed sensor is. So pay attention. I've selected a cup that fits my bearing. I want to make sure we're pushing on the outer race not just on the middle, okay? We'll get our forcing screw. We'll get a little flat piece that's gonna fit out here. I wanna make sure that, I should've done this earlier, before I Debbie deed it. I'm gonna knock that crust off without getting it down in the hole. There's that, cause this thing could be on here jiggling around and whatnot. Knocking the crust in the hole, it's not what you want. So we'll get our bearing on there. We use the old Harbor Freight to yank it back in. It does not go that way. Where is it? There she is. Come here, little fella. You just gotta make sure it starts straight. That's the biggest thing. It's not like the most important decision of your life, but. HF for the win. Once the bearing is in, we'll give her another little toot of Debbie D. It's Debbie D. Don't know why. We'll stick our hub on. Now this time you want to make sure your cup is holding the inner race because you don't want to push it out. Somebody at home is probably screaming, bro, you forgot the snap ring. Don't worry, we can still put it on. However, if your snap ring is on the outside and you push this on, then you can say, bro, you forgot the snap ring.
There she is. A baby is born. It's in the bearing zen. We're all happy. Now we gotta put the snap ring on, bro. So we'll get one side of that started. All right. Find a screwdriver. What you can do. <clears throat> let me uh, let me move this out a little bit where I can get to it. There we go. It's a little not much easier. I just work it. Work it, girl. You gotta say that while you do it. Oh. And then get right to the last little bit and just give her a little flick. That's all. And then you're in. And then just look to make sure you're in. Now you can fiddle around with snap ring pliers if you want to. However, I think using the screwdriver method goes pretty effortlessly. I'm just going to get up on the end and now don't hit your seal. Tap, tap that way. Just on the edge of that. Tap, tap that way. It is in. I can feel it. Wipe it off. Make it look presentable even though no one will ever see it. And that's all there is to it. Easy peasy. Now, we'll go get some fluid film. Actually, I just lied to you in an effort to stay with our WD theme. Stay and spray. Like fluid film. Give that a toot in a hole. Oh man, it looks like cooking spray. So there's that. So now we'll slip our shaft back in. Let's see, I ain't got no reason why we can't, right? Cut her loose. Stuff smells. I don't know what the smell is though. I can't pinpoint it. Well, let's see, I got my CV shaft all tied up here. For demonstration purposes only. Get that down. Get my wire back. There's my wire. I know we skipped that step there in the beginning, but you guys were so into the classical music. I just didn't want to didn't want to interrupt that. Line that little guy back up. There's that. We'll pull down our control arm. Can you see what's going on? You can't because we have the light. Hold that, huh? Ah, better wipe that off. Somebody's gonna be like, get him, wipe off that control arm, bro. That's what those people sound like. The control arm people. There we go. Line up our bell joints. Find the goodness that held that thing together. Way up yonder. No, definitely those are not the bolts up there. Oh, there's somewheres. There's one. There's two and three. Bolts, nuts, what's the difference, you know? Actually, they are quite a bit different. them on yeah look at that lighting ah, if I'm a torque wrench there it is two ugga duggas it does come with a new nut However, it is not the OEM 12 point, but <laughs> I was gonna say it's the OEM size, but it's not. Way to go, napper. She's a 32 now. Somebody's gonna be mad about that. Bro, like I never use Napa hubs, man. I don't know if that's what that guy sounds like. Probably, it sounds a lot like the other guy. We will torque this to manufacture specs. Oh, you guys are in my way. Kumbaya, where are you at, baby? There she is. We owned it. Now, 
some viewer commented on this the other day. Couldn't tell what I was doing with the punch by the CV axle. I'm knocking down a little knockdown donger so the edge of the axle nut has you know a little flange that sticks out and that lines up with the slot or like the keyway portion it, and then you just take a chisel and you knock it down you stake it down you're supposed to de-stake them before you take them off but if your impact has any sort of beans just spin them off essentially it just locks it down prevents it from coming loose kind of like a cotterless cotter pin or a wireless cotter pin Think about that. The technology Toyota has cordless cotter pins. Every day, we'll wipe her down. Get rid of our dirt that we have all over it. That way, when we put our rotor on, assuming the inside of our rotor is nice and clean, we'll have a nice flat surface. We don't have to worry about creating any brake jitter. I don't know if that's a technical term. No shimmy. We find our rotor. Looks relatively clean. If there's any rust inside the hat area, you gotta clean it off. However, this one seems to have had some sort of grease substance on it. Perhaps when it was installed. So that one's nice and clean. So we'll hit her up with some stain spray or spray and stay. Either way, we're spraying, it's staying. You know, we're wrapping and rhyming. We'll take and stick this up here. Now just hold that in. And I'll make sure it stays on because if you're, you know, meddling around with the caliper, you don't want to be knocking it loose and getting a bunch of schmutz behind it. I don't know if that's a real word either. I'm making a lot of crap up today. It's Wednesday. I'm already ready for the week to be over. There's that. Now, which part of the road? Oh, probably ought We got a little bit left in there. We'll hose her down. This is the can that never ends. This is the can that never ends. Just goes on and on, my friend. You guys know the brake clean song, right? Of course you don't, I just made it up. Oh yeah, I'll break this, we're getting off that little guy. Okie doke. Stick our caliper back on. Now, of course, I made a rookie mistake taking it off. I did not compress it just a smidge. So we're gonna have to kind of wiggle her on there. And then we can compress it just a little bit. And then we'll go on a whole lot easier. We'll stick our bolts back in it. And then torque those factory spec and then you're done shows over and there you have it folks simply reinstall the wheel pump up the brakes enjoy the ride those are the last three steps and that is replacing the wheel bearing on your 05 Yoda Ola of course in this case using the hub tamer this is by OTC. I know there's a lot of other like knockoff brands out there where people have commented on my videos that they use them and they work good. So perhaps if you don't, you know, work in a shop and you don't need one for daily use, maybe some of the cheaper alternatives are good. If you're interested in, well, it's going to be the hub grappler kit. I'll put a link in the description below. I'll put a link to those bearings that I add with the kit. That seems to make it a little bit smoother in my opinion. Put some links down there for the video I did using the bearing perhaps maybe for the first time i don't recall uh what else can i tell you it's pretty easy i mean if you know left on loan not making a video or comments commentating commentating a video if i have one of these to do i can do one of these i would say equally as fast as i can do a standard bolt-on hub assembly 
and, you know, you can bring them in and out, you know, bang them out in 30 minutes and out the door, you know, same thing. Book time on these is like two hours. So if you have a shop or you work in a shop and you don't yet have, you know, a tool like this, I'd highly encourage you to get one. A uh, big, big time saver. Now, if you don't have a tool and you don't want to buy the cheaper version of it to try to do it on a car, just take the wheel off, do the same process we did, you know, just unbolt the ball joint and then take the two bolts out of your strut and take your whole steering knuckle to a shop and have them press your bearing out, press it in. However, after you do that, you should get a wheel alignment done, especially if that had cam adjuster bolts in the strut. That's the whole purpose of doing this is we avoid that whole mess. All we do is unhook the ball joint in and out, bolt the ball joint back up. No need for an alignment. Makes the job a lot simpler. And that's all I can tell you. So leave all your questions, comments, criticisms, and concerns down below. And while you're down there, a ring of that bell so you get notifications from our channel. Find us around in the social network and uh, on Patreon. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.